Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. Today's class is a yin yoga class with a focus on self-care. We all need to take some extra time for self-care in our lives and hopefully this class is one that you will choose to do for yourself. So you might need a couple of props. I have blocks here if you'd like to prop yourself up in any of the poses. So get your props and join me. Thank you so much. So we'll start off in a butterfly pose. Just bringing the soles of your feet together and you can play around with the distance of your feet from you. So, you know, if it's further away, it gets more into like the outer parts of your legs. And if it's closer, it brings it up into the hips and low back. So if you'd like to use your props, you can place a block on top of your feet or next to your feet. Play around with it and see what feels nice on your body today. And we'll just fold over into a butterfly pose. And we'll be here for a minute or two. And just breathing into it here. And as you hold the pose, if your body wants to sink further, you can just adjust your props. Don't want to overstretch, but if your body is going in that direction, feel free. Using your hands to assist coming back up out of this pose. You can shake your legs out. And from here, we're actually going to go into a caterpillar pose. So you can use your blocks. I might need two blocks here today. My back and my hamstrings feel a little bit tight. So you want to keep your legs extended out. You can keep your knees soft. You can even bend under the knees if that feels good and use props underneath your knees if that makes this more comfortable for you. You can also place a prop underneath your bottom to lift your hips up if that makes this pose easier for you as well. So we're just rounding over the legs, finding where it feels good today. I'm going to start way up here and then we'll see where it goes. I'm just letting your body sink into the pose. And this is a great stretch all along the posterior chain, 
all along your spine and the backs of your legs. This is one of those poses that looks a lot easier than it is, especially when you're holding it for any period of time. So just make sure that you're being mindful and not pushing yourself too far in this pose. And using your hands, you very, very slowly come up out of this pose. As I said, that pose can be a whole lot more intense than it looks. So from here, we'll make our way onto our bellies and we'll take a sphinx pose as a counter pose to all that forward folding. So you wanna make your way onto your belly Bring your elbows underneath your shoulders and your hands, palms down, forearms are straight out in front of you like railroad tracks. And bringing your shoulders back and down and taking your gaze straight out in front of you. And feeling some compression in the low back is what we're looking for. If it is painful, you can either come out of the pose or you can bring your arms further out in front of you to decrease the intensity, or you can stack your palms, stack your hands on top of one another and rest your forehead there. You can also play around with props like pillows or bolsters to see if you can bring it into a more restorative pose if that feels better. And release. 
Let's take a child's pose here. Big toes touching, knees wide, allowing your torso to sink in between the knees and stretching your hands out in front, bringing your forehead to the mat. Your bottom may or may not touch your heels, and that's fine. Mine doesn't usually touch. Some people's do, but the aim is for your hips to be close to the heels or touching the heels. And coming up onto hands and knees, we're going to come into a sleeping swan pose. If this pose is too intense for you, you can take the reclined swan version, also known as pigeon. So if you're taking sleeping swan, you're taking your right foot towards your left hand, right knee towards the right hand, and extending your leg out behind you. If your hips are very tight, you can place a block or a pillow underneath the right hip. And from here, we'll walk our arms forward. You can come up on your forearms or you can take it all the way down and place your forehead on your stacked hands. And releasing, coming up out of this side, pressing into your hands and bring your right foot back to meet the left. We'll take a, just a brief child's pose here. Sinking the forehead down, sinking the hips towards the heels. And we'll make our way to the other side. Taking your left foot towards your right hand and the left knee towards the left hand, extending that left leg out behind you, using props if that's what you need. And we're just going to sink down into our sleeping swan on forearms or on props or all the way down with your head stacked on your Head on your stacked hands and just breathing into that left hip.
And releasing, pressing into your hands, bringing that right leg back to meet the left, coming into a brief child's pose again. Taking the forehead down to the mat or on props. And making our way on to our backs, we're going to take banana pose before our final Shavasana. So you can press your feet into the mat and shift your hips over to the right side of the mat. Walking your feet over, keeping your hips facing up to the ceiling. And you can adjust your torso to come into that nice, beautiful banana shape. If it feels good to you, you can clasp your elbows or clasp your right wrist with your left hand. And if you want to take it further, crossing that right ankle over the left. And then keeping the shoulders on the mat, keeping the hips flat on the mat. Feeling a nice stretch in the whole right side of your body. And releasing the side, pressing your feet, bending your knees and pressing your feet into the mat, shifting your hips towards the left and walking your legs over towards the right, adjusting your torso so that you're getting a nice stretch all along the left side of your body. And you can clasp elbows or hold that left wrist with the right hand to increase your stretch and cross that left ankle over the right if you want to increase the stretch on the bottom part of your body. And keeping those shoulders and hips flat on the mat. And just breathing into this pose.
and slowly releasing this side. Bend your knees and press your feet back into the mat so that you can adjust your hips towards the center of the mat. And we'll take our final Shavasana here, extending the legs out on your mat, rolling the shoulder blades underneath your back and palms are facing up with your arms alongside of your body here. Just taking a nice rest after all the beautiful work that we've done today. If you're ready to come out of your Shavasana, join me in wiggling fingers and toes, moving your hands and your feet, and bringing yourself when you're ready to one side and up to a seat. Thank you for joining me today and taking time for self-care for yourself. So important. I hope to see you next week. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. If you've enjoyed my videos and like this video, click the notification bell. Keep an eye out for my course for fibromyalgia and chronic pain that's coming out very soon. And I also have the Facebook group for chronic pain and fibromyalgia. The link will be below in the description. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much.